Well, while crews race to contain and clean up the massive oil spill off the Southern California coast, other teams are racing to rescue birds and other wildlife affect, affected by the thick, goopy oil. Right now about this effort, David Majewski, a naturalist from the National Wildlife Federation. David, thanks for being with us. Tell us specifically about the, the effort with the birds here and, and how you actually go about finding the birds and rescuing the birds. Sure. Well, you know, when these, you know, disastrous oil spills happen, it puts a tremendous amount of you know, danger to all the marine wildlife and coastal wildlife, whether it be the shorebirds and the marine birds or the marine mammals, obviously fish, but also smaller organisms like the plankton that basically are the bottom of the food web for these marine ecosystems, which by the way, you know, we human beings rely on as well. And so, you know, when the, the, that oil can actually coat these animals and cause all sorts of problems, it can get into their eyes, it can clog their, their gills, it can, you know, clog up their lungs and actually cause direct mortality. That that way. And of course, there's the long term impacts, which, you know, can be even more devastating where the, you know, the whole food web crashes and these animals can get reproductive health issues and uh, suppressed immune systems and things like that. So right now, the, you know, the immediate danger is these animals that, you know, are showing up covered in oil. And the, uh, it's the Oiled Wildlife Care Network is the organization in California who's responsible for responding to these injured animals that you know are coated in oil, and so if folks do see one of these um, you know injured animals that way, you want to contact them. Don't try to handle the animal or get involved. That oil is toxic to us humans as well. Uh, you know that's a great point. So don't touch. Just get in contact with these people. Uh, say the name of the organization again, and, and and how many people do they have working in this area? So it's the Oiled Wildlife Care Network. It's actually a consortium of over 40 organizations operating in California to do the rescue work. There's different groups that focus on marine birds and marine mammals. Um, and so there's a lot of people, uh, you know, sort of at the ready to be actually out there rescuing wildlife. To date, the numbers are fairly low. Um, I was just checking on their website and, you know, there's, you know, sort of a dozen or so birds that have been reported. I'm not seeing any marine mammals uh, yet, but it's still early days and, and, and that number could likely go, you know, way up. So, David, when we think about, you know, all the different things that happen in, in different coastlines here, are there certain coastlines that are more susceptible to oil spills than other? And is this particular situation in California unique? You know, any, any coastal area or any wetland area, for that matter, where these old pipelines are running through is at risk. You know, that's why the National Wildlife Federation, my organization, is leading the charge to decommission the Line 5 pipeline up in the Great Lakes, which is pumping like 23 million gallons a day. And that pipeline is 70 years old. And the reality is, is that these aging pipelines are a massive risk no matter where they are. We need a lot better regulation. We need a plan to retire them and decommission them so that these kinds of disastrous oil spills don't keep happening because they're going to keep happening. And we've seen it happen before. What's your what's your fear out of this one? You know, you mentioned this can work its way through the entire food chain. So I would imagine just devastating to the, you know, the ecologic system that we love so much out there. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can we've unfortunately got a lot of examples, whether it was the Exxon Valdez oil spill or the Deepwater Horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico, looking at just the tremendous negative impact that these events have on on the ecosystem. And again, I remind everybody, we are part of the ecosystem. So it's not just animals dying, it's 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 our food systems being impacted. It's our economies being impacted. And so there's a lot at risk here. And you know, it's it's short-term, you know, immediate losses of 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 life in terms of wildlife, but, you know, these sort of insidious long-term effects, you know, it can take a coral reef ecosystem 10 to 30 years to recover from an oil disaster. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that just happens overnight. And so the more we can be proactive and prevent these kinds of spills, and again, a, bi a big way to do that is to really uh, focus on the effort to decommission these aging pipelines that are really just not worth the risk. Mm -hmm. 